Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this celebration time. Hopefully you've had a, a good nourishing lunch uh, and you're ready for some fun. Uh, hopefully you all get, got some M&Ms and you've uh, read some of the messages. FHPC rocks, right? So we are here um, to celebrate. And, oh, actually, I'm going to start by introducing myself because, uh, believe it or not, there are some faces here that I don't recognize, uh, and which means you may not recognize me. Betty, Scott, no, that's... <laughs> Dr. Irwin has some medication for you. <laughs> for perennial confusion. Um, my name is Mark Ray Corona. I uh, have the pleasure and privilege to be the director of this program for almost 21 years now. So, uh, so today is a day to celebrate success and to have an attitude of gratitude. We launched CBN and for that I say hallelujah. Can I get a hallelujah? All right. Actually that was a pretty good hallelujah. Let's get one more. Hallelujah! Okay, okay. You'll have, you'll have opportunities later. <laughs> Months of hard work, years of accumulated wisdom, hours of inspiration and perspiration have gone into making us better connected through CBN so that we can provide coordinated care to our patients and families. So I was at the volunteer uh, appreciation dinner last week, wonderful event, and one of the speakers um, asked the volunteers, do you know how big a difference you make in patients' lives? And I thought, you know, it's huge. So I thought about it in the context of our CBN project. Do you know what a really big accomplishment that was, this is? It's huge, it's just absolutely huge. And I'm, I'm gonna try to explain it, but I'm not sure I can do it justice. So maybe one way to think about it is to think about something that you do in your daily work that pertains to documentation, communication, care coordination. So think, think back one year ago to, to something related to uh, communication, care coordination, documentation. Has everybody got something in their head? <laughs> Well, it's completely changed, hasn't it? Those, those things are completely gone. They've been transformed into what we hope is something much, much better for you. And so uh, I just think we need to say hallelujah for that, that, that accomplishment. So one more time, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. OK, what an amazing accomplishment. Now, of course, we are still in a little bit of a state of change. This isn't a done deal yet. Um, and, and we can't forget that, we can't get down on ourselves because everything's not working perfectly right now. Uh, I read a little snippet from a think tank out of Washington uh, last week, and they were talking about healthcare EMRs. And they said that really, um, any organization that's undergoing a conversion to a new EMR will remain in a state of flux for up to three years after their go live. So it just takes that long to deal with um, zebras, as Miss Maggie O'Brien likes to, to call them, for us to wrap our brains around all the new tasks, the new rituals, the new ways of doing things that we need to do. But, but we're three months into this. We're just three months since we, we put away uh, Suncoast and have fully adopted CBN, and we are already doing really great things. So, uh, today is a day of, of gratitude um, and so thankful to a lot of people who made this project possible. We're going to thank them, but before I do that, uh, we have somebody else who would like to uh, give us thanks, and that is Diana Killian. Uh, Diana Killian is a Senior Vice President for Mission for FHS, and she is also our boss. Thanks, Mark. It's great to be here and to hear of the great successes and to know of the great successes. And I don't know if you know this, but you guys are on the cutting edge because the rest of the system is, will be beginning 
their transition, our transition, to an electronic medical record and a total financial system. We've already started, but the big light switch goes on June of 2013. So hospice, palliative care is ahead of the game. So high five to all of you, Woo! high five to all of you, good job. Now what I want you to do is raise your hand, everyone, to the people across the table, to the people beside you, I want you to give a high five, good job. Good job. Good job, good job, good job. Good job. And that not only comes from me, you want me to stay still, don't okay. you? <laughs> you know what? Let me tell you a secret. I used to do exactly what you're doing <laughs> when I was a baby nun trying to learn media. And I had somebody um, who walked the entire room and I'm like moving this camera all over the place and I almost got seasick, so I'll try to stay. <laughs> But on behalf of all of us at the leadership team, I was telling Joe Wilchuk, I was on my way over here, and he said, make sure that everybody in hospice knows how grateful we are that you have paved the way, that they have paved the way. So a high five from Joe Wilchuk to all of you for the, for the work that you did in CBN. And I hope it's not just that we're better connected because somebody down the street has that as their slogan. And, and we're more than better connected. You know, we have the human touch. We have the human touch that makes a difference in everybody's lives and in that last moment of life. And you do that very, very well. You know, when I think about the change that you undertook about nine months ago, wasn't that the conception nine months ago? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 15 months ago. Well, it was a long one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a long one. It's almost like getting that first VCR with your television <laughs> and not knowing how to change the time from midnight or 12, 1200 and then uh, how to, how to um, record, do a um, set recording off your television, and some of us still don't know how to do it. <laughs> that we get grandkids in to do it. But you, you have accomplished an amazing, an amazing task, and we are better for it as an organization. <coughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you, and the last, high five it. To, to the people across the table from you. Good job, good job. Thanks, Diana. So, um, we had an uh, amazing group of people um, who served in leadership roles um, on this project, and I'm extremely grateful for their skills and humor, uh, their gifts um, that the trainers and the super users brought to the project. But I'm most grateful for the opportunity that we had to learn things together. We, we learned a lot, uh, what I would call invaluable lesson. Um, we learned how our brains work, right? Super users and trainers and how they don't work <laughs> anymore. We were, we're not quite sure what to attribute that to, but um, we learned how to work under pressure. We learned how to follow, follow process docs. We learned what happens when you don't follow process docs. Um, we learned, for those of us who were training, it was, it was really fun. We would, we would uh, start our training and we would see the people who were just clicking all over the place. And it was like, they must do their shopping on the internet. Because you could always tell who, who was click happy because they, they had a lot of experience uh, uh, clicking around. So that, that was another thing that we learned. Um, but we, we learned to challenge ourselves, we've learned to challenge e each other um, to new levels of personal and professional growth. So I want to thank the people who really were instrumental in making this project happen. And we are fortunate that we have a couple of people from CHI 
uh, who are part of our support team called TIG. You, uh, you've probably heard us refer to TIG, the Tacoma Implementation Group. And I, I know they're here, right? Raise our hands, right, where are they? Ah, okay. So we have with us two very special stars. We have Amy Glasscock and Janelle, I can never remember your last name. Benson. Benson, that's right, there's two Janelle. So come on up, I'd like to, to give you a little something for all your hard work. Yeah, that'd be great. This project would have not been possible uh, without the, oh, you cut your hair. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we this this project would have not been possible without all of their wisdom, their support. Um, they're just fantastic people. We loved working with you, and uh, thank you for leading us to the promised land. Glad you could be here to also help us solve our building problems. <laughs> so thank you so much. So now I, I'd like. Oh, I, there's one other person who couldn't be here today, who, who you don't know who she is, but um, I'm going to say her name and just ask that you um, just think good thoughts about her because she was wonderful um, to work with. She was our project manager. Her name was Diane Skinner. Um, those of you who worked with her know just what a treasure she was. Um, she helped us solve problems. Um, overcome barriers, just many, many things. So, so a moment of, of gratitude for Diane. Okay, so now our super users and trainers, what a group of folks. Um, we, we got together um, back at Shenanigans <laughs> last spring and it, we, they had been invited to be super users and trainers. I, uh, they hadn't read a job description, they didn't really know what they were signing up for but they came in with open hearts and willingness to, to make um, our, our program better and stepped into their roles and they just did incredible, incredible work. So I would like to um, have all of the super users and trainers come up. I have a little something for you. And then I'd like you to stand up here so that you can be recognized by everyone for all your good work. So uh, starting with Cheryl Scanniff. Bernalda Cookie Savoy. Nadine Lane, come on in. Kathy Crespo, are you, is, is she here? She works nights at Hospice House, and she was one of our long-term care super users. Next, we have Pam Ketzner. <laughs> Carol Pinkerton Ewens, also at Hospice House. She's, she's working at Hospice House. Right now. Cookie, you're racking them up there. Frank Whitener, <laughs> HME super user extraordinaire. And his cohort in crime, Jason Rice. Next, we have Kathy Ainsley. Stay up here. Yeah. Tanya Engstrom. Kevin Henney. <laughs> Janine McCann. She's not here. Okay, we'll hold her. Oh, Pam's her roommate. David Booker, did he get here yet? No, he's on his way, I know. Uh, Kat Erelin. Deborah Perner, also at Hospice House. And she is, and so, well, can you? Uh, 
and nor is Melanie Brown, but let's give Melanie Brown a, a round of applause. She's in Hawaii, she's not a word. So, um, these awards, um, can I hold, have one for just a second? I, well, yeah, you know me. Um, it says, there, there are these um, nice pillar awards. It says, you are a CBN superstar. 2011 Go Live Franciscan Hospice and Palliative Care. So, okay. so this group is, is an incredible group of CBN superstars, and I, I thank you, I thank you, I thank all of you for all your wonderful work. Now, so, um, the pro this project wouldn't have been possible uh, without um, some other really significant leadership. And uh, this, was, this was our, we didn't, we didn't know what we were, but we, we ultimately started calling ourselves a steering committee. And uh, two amazingly talented women um, were part of our steering committee. So, uh, first person is Paula Kuransky. Yay! And last, but definitely not least, Miss Maggie O'Brien. She is a CBN superstar. Maggie has a dress on. <laughs> so, one final hallelujah and thank you to this group. Okay, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing because I'm not supposed to be doing anything. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> am I recording? Okay, good. Um, so we've just met some of the, the heroes of hospice that uh, gave us some good education and solved problems for us. What we want to do now is, is uh, to throw open our uh, stories about CBN. Some of those phone calls, maybe some of those uh, trainers got from us frantic people out there. And also some of the triumphs. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. So we have a wonderful vehicle for doing that. Wonderful group of people who will be uh, joining us. They, they are the, the Heart Sparkle Players. Uh, I'm excited to introduce this group from Olympia. Um, they have a unique way of celebrating and capturing people's stories in the ways, in all the ways that they play back our stories, they always honor the tone and the truth of our stories. So pour out your CBN triumphs and tragedies and watch them take life on the stage. Stretch it out, team. We're looking for them. Oh. <laughs> So, uh, just a little bit more about these folks. Some, <laughs> some of you, some of you uh, older time folks might remember a time at the Glass Museum where we had an education day and they came and uh, told some stories with us. Uh, one of the ones I remember is that I was frantically trying to find my nine months old daughter's shoe before yes. taking her off to daycare and they reenacted that, <laughs> trying to find a shoe. So. Um, Again, like I said, they're from Olympia, and they do some um, 
they, they, it's not just funny, it's not just comedy. They really uh, uh, wrestle with some uh, uh, other issues as well. We had one where we were comparing uh, um, the dying process to the salmon um, process, and they did some very cool things around that as well. So now, <clears throat> without further ado, pour your triumphs and tragedies on the floor and watch Heart Sparkle players make them come to life.
from this experience that you have been going through. Okay? So are you with me on that one? Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Very good. I like that. So I want you to think about your day thus far. Your day, you know, your morning, your lunch. And on the count of three, all at the same time, I want you to give me some sort of sound or word to express some part of your day thus far, okay? All at once, so, you know, we can all go crazy. You can do it too. Okay, okay. I will, I, I will hold back on the mic. On the count of three, one, two, three. Oh! <laughs> like you to do is I'd like you to think about this journey that you all have been on with this electronic medical records mandated by the federal government. <laughs> Bless them. And I want you to think of a moment that stands out for you. And perhaps it's a moment that was very mundane, but somehow it comes to your mind. Perhaps it was an excruciating moment. Perhaps it was a moment that happened just you and, well, I don't know what else. The computer, the car, a tree? I don't know. Perhaps it was a moment that happened with another human being. Perhaps it was a moment that happened at work. Or perhaps it was one of the moments when you went home and you talked a little bit about how things were going. Anybody ever do that? No details because of confidentiality, but we certainly have our feelings. So I'd like you to get a moment, whatever moment comes to you, and that's the thing about playback theater. We didn't drive here going, well, I hope they tell the moment about, because we don't know, right? The moments are yours to choose. That's the beauty of us humans and our stories and our moments. So I want you to find a moment and I want you to turn to someone and tell them a bit about this moment. And Eric will play some music and you'll talk to each other like you've been doing, but only specifically a moment. Go ahead. Talk to each other. <laughs> so that everybody can hear, all right? And that will help me as well in hearing. So 
all of you told a moment, or maybe you didn't get a chance to tell a moment, but there was a moment in your mind. There was a moment that came to you. Who would be willing to share their moment? Raise your hand. We have a, a moment over here. Okay. So I'm going all the way over here. And, and all right. So um, tell us your name. I just assume we name. Oh, me Another colleague here with me. So this is from the two of us. Okay, beautiful. Is that so okay? Tell us your moment. Okay. Well, we're physicians. I guess we have to say that. So we, we write orders. And in, we work in the inpatient unit, and well, all of us very much pay attention to bowels. 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 Can you hear that? Bowels. Bowels. This is about bowels. And as people get close to dying, the nurses want us to stop the bowel regimen. That's a good thing, because we don't want all these people that are really close to die. Well, when we write that order, we get kicked out of the computer. And so we say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to write that order. Oh. <laughs> so you get kicked out of the computer when you, it shuts down when you stop the bowel when you stop the bowel measurement. <laughs> True story. So they're not going to write the order. So you're going to figure out some kind of workaround for that one. I'm sure somebody's working on that workaround. All right. So tell us your Oh, yeah. You were going to tell us your name. We know. So this is from Anonymous. Dr. Anonymous, right. Dr. A. Oh, with the bell program. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's do a chorus with this. Let's watch. Oh. Done, and then I sat down and I said, Hi, 
what can we do today? So we went in, we did a shower, we did the shave, we did the whole nine yards. Come back out and I said, now, you're gonna help me with my checklist. And I bring out my big long list and I said, tell me if I did or did not do it. Well, number one, read it, I read everything to him when we got all done, he goes, we did all that? I said, we did. I said, now, let's see if we can send it and make sure that it goes through. And for the first time, it went through. And I said, guess what? It went through, I won't have to call Pam. <laughs> so then I got to see him a second time, and when I walked in the door, he goes, did you bring your friend? <laughs> to help them. <coughs> and now she takes a computer. And that computer does not work right for her. One day she walked into a gentleman's home and he was like, oh no, not one of those. <laughs> but Kathy used her intuition and she and that gentleman did a dance with that computer. And they made friends with the computer, with each other, and what they needed to do. The end. Did that capture the spirit of your story? Thank you. Who has another moment? The, okay, the energy is moving across the room. Here I come. Hi, my name is Marguerite and I'm a senior and this is when we used to have to work on Saturdays. Can you this, hear her? This one Saturday. There you go. This one Saturday. I, I get lost everywhere I go, and I can't remember where I went, but I, wherever I was, I was riding all over the place, and once I finally found it, it was this, I kept riding up and down this muddy road, it was this farmland out there, and this cow, it kept looking at me, it finally stood in the middle of the road, I'm here, looking at the cow, the people are living over here, I'm trying to call them, their, their phone is busy, I couldn't call Excess, I sat there, Access, whatever that name is, and I sat there, and I sat there, and I sat there, I was so mad and so upset and I kept looking at the cow and the cow kept staring at me and I finally said, they're going to have to fire me today because I'm going home. <laughs> What is 
is that? What in the world? <laughs> It takes longer to see the, to chart about the visit than to actually do the visit, and that, yeah. And, and, and how do you feel about that? <laughs> it's frustrating. It's it, um, it, the amount of boxes you have to fill in if you're doing it right uh, compared to what you actually did. You know, it's challenging. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is Susan's moment about. This uh, reality that there are times when the input into the computer actually takes longer than the visit, than the seeing the patient. So we'll do a fluid sculpture with this. Let's watch. Stay just a band-aid. That's it. Today. Just bend it. That's it. Today, just a band aid. It took me That's it. 30 minutes to write about Today. that band aid. <laughs> it took me That's it. 30 minutes to write about that band aid. That's it. <laughs> That's it. 30 minutes. 30 minutes! And I have to check this box. This box. Then, <laughs> short visit, long report. <laughs> what about the person? I have to check this Short this visit. Long okay. report. That's it. Oh. I put the bandaid, I put the bandaid on, and then I left. Okay. We have to. 
We were told that we had to carry them wherever we went during the entire eight hour day. And so Mark and Pam got us hooked up with these little backpacks that made us look like we had bombs attached to us. <laughs> so that when we walked into the nursing home, we were all that. Even when we gave showers, we were to have these things attached to us. And we, we, weren't, we were made fun of, but we weren't sure how we were gonna even do a bed bath without knocking the patient that had his backpack. <laughs> And so they gave us um, these little wrappers to keep our iPads um, wet free so that we could carry them on us in the shower. We were always in the shower. Wilfred, they want it! Wilfred! And what's your name? Devanna. Devanna? That's a beautiful name. Thank you. Devanna. So this is Devanna's moment. Um, We're going to do this as uh, three solos. <laughs> Let's watch. I am the backpack. I am so excited to go everywhere today. <laughs> and you can take me in the shower. You can take me in the car. You can lift me. But I'll be with you wherever you go, all day long. Yes. Because I am your happy friend. The backpack. I am the patient. And the first time I saw one of these backpacks, I have to say I was a little concerned. It was strapped to my physician, my CNA, anyone that had anything to do with my care, they wore these things. What were they doing with them? Who were they reporting it to? And oh, why were they trying to hit me with it? <laughs> Something as vulnerable as a shower. They had to be there with their backpack. <laughs> And, and, and the backpack had its own special cover, so it would not get wet. Me, I was soaking wet. <laughs> the backpack had its own raincoat. <laughs> I just hope this is really necessary because it was different. It was like working with a space astronaut and there because it was always with them. Oh! <laughs> what? I have to carry this with me everywhere I go. This has to be with me everywhere. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Shouldering, but I'm 
still going to care. I might be carrying, but I am still going to care. No matter what. change is good or not. It, change is. Now, whether it's good or bad, we don't know. But it certainly is, isn't it? That is the facts. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think of a moment when you were able to adapt, when you were able to problem solve, when you were able to get something off your chest so that then you could move on to do what you wanted to do, which is to help other human beings, right? Because that's the deal. Maybe, you know, you went begrudgingly, or maybe you said, hey, I'm gonna just walk on through this. <laughs> maybe you were a frontline person like we've been hearing about, or maybe you were somebody who's who's providing support in the background, so to speak. Not making any judgments. I'm not saying foreground, background is better or good, but just people have different roles, right? So maybe you were, you know, one of those tech support people, or maybe you were one of those go-to people, or maybe you were one of those managers that were, you know, saying, well, yeah, we gotta do this, okay? <laughs> Let me figure out how to help you. We don't know. But I'd like you to think about one of those moments. And while our wonderful musician, let's give it up for the musician. <laughs> while our wonderful musician plays some music, you all are gonna talk to each other again. So go ahead, tell one of those moments. And it's not attached to the admission. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you. 
together. So who has a moment they'd be willing to share from this exchange? So there's one here and there's one there. And there's one over there. All right, awesome. So this is Nan, can you hear her? Keep it close. And this isn't so much uh, an adaptation as kind of realizing the obvious. <laughs> because I cried and whined, I bet, for two weeks or even more. Because when I went home, I couldn't get my computer to synchronize. And, and it would just be so much easier if I could just do that synchronization, <laughs> pick it up and take off. And I, I just, I had to drive down to the local... Uh, service station in the middle of the night sometimes to try to get this thing to synchronize. Well, the obvious presented itself when I finally realized all I had to do was push the button, make the little antenna go up, <laughs> <laughs> and then all my problems were synchronization means so to communicate with the big computer so like you can do that at home right you can do that remotely at, a, at another place and and so and you have to do that because then that's the way that you get the information into the computer right get the records into your computer so you have to do this synchronization everybody with me I know y'all. Y'all with me? All right. And so you've been trying to do that for two weeks. And you would leave your house and get a, a, go to a place that maybe you could get a signal. Where the skies were clear. Where the skies were clear. So she would leave her house and go to a place where the skies were clear so she could get the signal. Let's hear it for the signal. Oh, 
I'm Gabby, I'm one of the admissions nurses, and I'm fairly new to hospice, but I know computers quite well. So I have, and I'm pretty fast at doing what I need to do, but one of my co-workers wasn't so fast, so she asked if she could come out on an admission with me. I'm like, absolutely. So we go out, she watches me do a couple admissions, and she's like, okay, I think I can do this on my own. Okay, and so I checked with her. Um, I knew she was going out, and I checked with her, and I checked with her the next day, and I'm like, and I'm gonna keep her anonymous. <laughs> and I'm like, well, so how did you do? And she's like, well, I think I did it pretty good. Um, and, and I'm like, well, that's good. And she says, yeah, but Dave, and Dave was our boss, and excuse me, she said, but I think he's going to shit when he sees the overtime. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you? And it takes us, I don't know, a real complicated admit, maybe three and a half hours. And she said, it took me ten and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> but she learned she had to change her practice and she had to accommodate and do it a little bit differently. So we fine-tuned a few things. And she did okay. And, and what was that like for you to be a mentor? <laughs> I thought, ooh, ten and a half hours. Maybe I didn't do such a hot job. <laughs> <laughs> then you helped her fine-tune yeah. and sort of get that. You kind of went back then yes. again and mm -hmm. helped her mm -hmm. to see how to get that fine-tuned. Yeah. Put those ten and a half hours in. Down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And yeah. she did. She's doing better and she's going. Yeah. So. And mm -hmm. you're seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> right, so this is Debbie's moment. Debbie, who is a new to hospice, but not new to computers. And so was able to mentor someone who wasn't probably, doesn't sound like, as comfortable with uh, doing the electronic medical records. So let's do a uh, tableau with this. There are times when you need your coworker more than you would ever, ever know. And this was one of those times. she went and then ten I said ten <laughs> what did I say ten. ten and a half hours later she got that admit in there <laughs> she has a co-worker who is watching out for her. <laughs> the end. Did that capture the spirit of your story? 
right. So we have time to end. We have time for one more. And what I would like to do in that one more is I would like you all to think about a word to express what the future will be for you with electronic medical records. All right? Because there is a future. Is that true? It is the deal. So what do you want the future to be like for you? It could be a word or two, an image. Just raise your hand and we'll, we'll end with that. Pam's phone number. <laughs> Pam's phone number. <laughs> Who's Pam? Right there. <laughs> and, and Pam's role is? So, for you, educator. Okay, so Pam's phone number. Perhaps Pam's home phone number. <laughs> All right, what else? Smooth. Smooth, smooth. Dancing. Dancing. A signal. So the person who said dancing, yeah? That, that good kind of dancing? Good kind of dancing. Where, where you got the right partner? Yeah. All right, okay, what? Somebody said signal? Yeah. No. Signal. Ease. What? Ease. Ease. Not disease. Yeah, not disease. Not disease, <laughs> but ease. Yes. Empty your offices. Empty your offices. Okay. So people are out. Okay. I got, it's like, whoa, is that a good thing? <laughs> yes. Fast. Get it fast. Over here? Any wishes over here? View? Yes. Smooth stability. Smooth stability. Mood. Oh, mood stability. I like that. Mood stability. Yeah. All right. Smooth mood. Anything else? All right. Yes, yes. Exciting. Exciting. The educator wants you to be excited. All right. Or she wants to be excited. You want to be excited. Oh, every day. Every day. All right. So we're going to do a final fluid with this, and you can do as many as you want with it, because they're awesome. Let's watch. Beatles were the Fab Four, 
Well, think again. Always just a step behind history. Where'd he go? Where is he? Just a step behind history. Is our fifth beetle. Our fifth beetle who can never quite catch up to the bad four. He is Gringo singing the land of CBN. And the uh, the words, the words are on sheets on your tables. The words are on sheets on your tables. Alright, we've got to have a bit of a story. Alright, we're ready for the story. We've got to the land of CBN. It's a little bit of a story, it's a little bit of a sing-along. So uh, the words as as uh, Mr. Sullivan said are on your uh, tables. So when the music starts, start singing along with me, Gringo. Okay, let's go on a journey, shall we? To the land of CBN. Once upon a time, there was a hospice and palliative care organization that had grown to be one of the largest programs in the world. Yes. This hospice, and that's, we're just gonna call it hospice from now on because palliative care takes too long to say, it has too many syllables, <laughs> did all of their documentation using silly things like paper and pens and voicemail and all that rubbish. <laughs> then one day their leader, he's a fabulous fellow, so I'm happy. <laughs> very wise, very handsome, very talented. <laughs> just just an amazing, amazing, amazing man. <laughs> so I'm telling you. <laughs> He said, let's all go to the land with the CBN electronic medical record. It's a very good place, and you will like it. <laughs> the staff wanted to believe the leader and his promises about the land of the CBN electronic medical record, but they were leery. They'd been given promises before. Many promises. <laughs> We won't talk about them. <laughs> so, with a healthy dose of skepticism, the, all of the staff together started singing a song because they were skeptical. They were singing this about the CBN electronic medical record land. They sang. Here it goes. One, two. <laughs> Fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me understand? Cause I've been in love before And I know that love was more Than just holding hands If I give my heart How many everyone? To you I must be sure from the very start That you would love me more than that If I trust in you, oh please don't run and hide. If I love you too, oh please don't hurt my pride like that. Cause I couldn't. Did you get, did you get that? No, that's all right. You can't hit the love in vain, CBN, you know. You don't want to have the love in vain. You don't want to break your heart off that comes up. Yes. Yes. Of course, there were some employees at the hospice who had been here in the 1990s when Franciscan Home Health had gone to the land of the Delta electronic medical record. A sad, sad time. It had been traumatic for them to go to the land of the Delta. Excuse me. Not yet. <laughs> and they were a little bit frightened. They, they liked their land of paper, pen, and voicemail. So they said with pain in their heart. <laughs> Yesterday, all my troubles seemed so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. I believe I'm 
I'm not half the man I used to be. That's quite a trick for some of you, I know. <laughs> There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, yesterday came suddenly. Why she had to go, I don't know. She wouldn't say. Now, I noticed there are some of you younger folks who aren't moving your mouths. <laughs> Do you not know who the Beatles are? Do you know that? <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting old. Of course, there were some staff who had worked at other hospice programs that were already using electronic medical records, and they were so excited about the trip to the land of Syria, and they weren't frightened at all. They were downright giddy about traveling to the land of electronic medical records. So they started singing. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> Gotta get CBN into your life, right? I was all alone, I took a ride, I didn't know what I would find. training from some folks at CHI called Pig, whatever that means. Now I must say that when the training began, there wasn't a lot of singing going on at that point. <laughs> it was crying and gnashing of teeth and all of those sorts of things and then lots of confused looks and angry people. But there was a particular song that actually could be heard ringing throughout the land of the sea world. I need somebody help! All right. When I was young, so much younger than today. I never needed anybody's help in any way. But now these days are gone, I'm not so self assured. Now I find I've changed my mind, I've opened up the door. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. And I do appreciate you being around. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Won't you please, please help me? And now my life is changing in oh, so many ways. Ain't that that's the truth? <laughs> Independence seems to vanish in the haze. But every now and then I feel so insecure. I know that to be like I've never done before. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. And I do appreciate you being around. Help me in my feet back on the ground. Won't you please, please help me? Help me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good. Give yourselves a round of applause. Very, very good. But it wasn't long before the super users finally got the hang of 
homeworks and road notes and LTC and HME and POT and BBC and FBI and NPR and <laughs> those last ones already exist. Yeah. But the super users started their first training for the staff with these lovely words. Don't you remember them being so kind and so helpful? <laughs> Not the da da dum dum part. <laughs> they said, If there's anything that you want, if there's anything I can do, just call on me and I'll send it along. We'll love from me to you. I got everything that you want, like a heart that's so, so true. Just call on me and I'll send it along. With love from me to you. Right, Cheryl? Those were the words you said to start every training. I remember them very good. <laughs> My training partner. Oh, well, that other guy's, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't long before the super users' words were being sung back and forth to each other by the staff to super users and vice versa because they were all trying to make points uh, that they knew the system better than the other person. And they said, <laughs> Be in my way. Do I keep, keep on talking till I can go on? What's he in your way? Run the risk of knowing that our love may soon be gone. We can work it out. We can work it out. Think of what you're saying. You can get it wrong and still you think that you're alright. <laughs> think of what I'm saying. We can work it out and get it straight or say goodnight. We can work it out. We can work it out. It's the hospice chorus. to the land of CBN, you had to do something called hammer <laughs> No, I'm not going to do MC Hammer. <laughs> Can't touch this, no. <laughs> I could, actually, I, I, I could, the only hammer song I could find with the Beatles was Bang Bang, Maxwell Silver Hammer came down on it. Yeah, it's a good song, but I didn't think it was very appropriate. <laughs> We don't believe in corporal punishment here. <laughs> Franciscan husband and Bella. So we have, we're going to sing this song instead. instead. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening. All over this land. Wait, 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 wait. Stop it, Kat. Wait, wait, wait. 
So, so did you happen to see what's going on? Yeah, in the morning world. The words are out of sync with the with the words. So she's not handle sunk. <laughs> Let's start over. Just, just, just don't pay attention to the. Uh, Lady in front of <laughs> Just sing with me. Really. <laughs> oh, can you start at the beginning now? There we go. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening. All over this land. I'd hammer out danger, I'd hammer out a warning, I'd hammer out the love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land. So tomorrow morning when you get up and you're, you're get, uh, sinking your computer, you're going to sing, if I had a hammer sink, I'd hammer sink in the morning, right? Yeah. All right, yeah. very good, very good. So, here we come to the end of our story. We have all walked down the long and winding road and happily live in the land of CBN electronic medical records. It's true we don't live in a yellow submarine. And no, you are not the walrus, kukukachu. <laughs> and despite what it feels like, you are not working eight days a week. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure some of you wanted to sing that song. <laughs> the land of CBN is a good place. It's a very good place. Yes, there may be times when you fight the dreaded VPN monster, and you may get kicked out of the LTC module at the worst possible times, as we've heard. <laughs> Enough about bowels. <laughs> and finally, you may find that the help desk is really not at all that helpful. <laughs> but that's okay. We are Franciscan Hospice and Palliative Care, and we will get by with a little help from our friends because we know this most important life lesson about all you need is... No. It's... <laughs> okay. You did good. <laughs> la, la. Sing that can't be sung. Nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game. It's easy. Nothing you can make that can't be made. No one you can say that can't be saved. Nothing you can do, but you can learn how to do time. It's easy. Okay, we all know this part, right? we typically talk about things that have happened in our 21 year history and we recount our successes and um, which is always a really good time because we really have accomplished a lot in our history and we are accomplishing a lot each and every day but so many people who are here in this room today weren't here 21 years ago um, so I really just wanted to 
in closing, talked about the things um, that are ahead, that we are, have yet to accomplish. Um, we are 300 plus staff members, we are 300 plus volunteers. Um, we are committed to making sure that people, uh, their pain and their symptoms are relieved. We are committed to uh, making sure that people have effective life closure, that they are able to grieve effectively. And that is a very powerful force. And yes, this last year we have been focused on CBN and it really has consumed so much of our time and energy in our brain. But in the midst of all that, you continue to do amazing work. And for that, I thank you. And yeah, thank you very much. And, and the good news is that, that uh, the best is yet to come. There are still so many things that we have left to do uh, to serve our community well, um, to make sure that each and every person who wants hospice and palliative care receives it, whether they're in a nursing home, a hospital, a physician's office, or, within their, or in their own home. And we have lots of plans um, that we are currently working on right now. I don't want to scare you with what they are. I, I think, actually, if you read the weekly memo a couple of weeks ago, you, you know uh, what a couple of them are about expansion. Um, and we do those things because we need to, uh, because we are, we are a little bit different in our approach to hospice and palliative care. We believe so strongly in what we do that we want to make sure that every single person who needs our care can get our care. And so that is, that is our future. And now with CBN under our belt, um, we are poised and ready to go. So celebrate the success uh, today. And uh, I think Kevin is, oh, okay, never mind. Bye. <laughs> To close our event on a much more serious note, here are our chaplains Kevin and Nico, or as we like to call them in Federer way, our paragons of prayer, our proponents of peace, our pastoral patriot patriarchs. Blessing. We're, we're hoping that we help out with mood, mood, mood stability. Uh, before we share just a, a short blessing to end our day, we thought that we would uh, share just a few uh, famous quotes from uh, Albert Einstein. And uh, I felt that many of his uh, sayings really captured some of my experiences as a super user. And uh, some of mine is a, a user pestered by a super user. <laughs> if you can't explain complex technology to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. <laughs> clever person solves a problem, a wise person avoids it. <laughs> Technological pro progress is like an axe in the hands of a pathological criminal. <laughs> Okay, not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything that can be counted counts. <laughs> we read that again. It would be possible to describe everything scientifically with the aid of computers, but it would make no sense. It would be without meaning as if you described a Beethoven symphony as a variation of wave pressure. <laughs> okay, a man should look for what is, and not for what he thinks it should be. <laughs> Anger dwells only in the bosom of fools. <laughs> Any man who reads too much and uses his brain too little falls into lazy habits of thinking. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
people here in the room. <laughs> Any intelligent fool can make things bigger and more complex. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. Before God, we're equally wise and equally foolish. Should be there in a minute. A hundred times a day. Oops. Look at it. Concern for men and women, men and women, and their fate must always form the chief interest of all technological endeavors. Never forget this in the midst of your diagrams and equations. Okay. A hundred times a day, I remind myself that my inner and outer lives are based on the labors of other people, living and the dead, and that I must exert myself in order to give in the same measure as I have received and still am receiving. So much of what we do in hospice is intangible and unquantifiable because what we are bearing witness to is how love crosses boundaries of illness, time, age, life circumstance, and station. In hospice, we witness every day how the loving action of God and how caring community makes itself known in individual life. Love that listens to story and holds concern and worry with compassion. And so our blessing for this day. Dear God, may the learning we experience today and the new tools we are using in our workday support our holy calling in hospice. May we be enabled to listen more, to advocate better for the precious individuals we encounter in our hospice ministry. Remind us each day that persons are always more important than institutions and programs and help us to faithfully hear and respond to both the joys and the distress we encounter. We ask this through your grace and your power. Amen. 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 That's it. There is no more. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming and celebrating with us and learning with us. Yeah.